In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a footer using Flexbox that stays at the bottom of the page even when the content isn't long enough to push it down there. Welcome back friends, Dan Vega here and if you're new to the channel, you can head over to danvega.dev and learn a little bit more about me. One of the things that you'll learn is that I'm passionate about software development, learning new things, and then teaching them to others. So here you can find a bunch of blog posts, videos, or even courses that can help you learn how to code. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and jump into the premise for today's tutorial. So my site is actually written in Gridsum. I use a view-based static site generator. And I did this about a year, year and a half ago, and I really just kind of slapped together the site. And I've been doing a lot more front-end development over the last year and have just gotten better at certain things. So one of the things I want to come back and do is update my site, not redesign, but kind of take this theme and like really clean it up. Right now I'm using Balma. I actually just want to move to either just pure CSS or uh, Tailwind. So I'm just playing around with cleaning up this design and figuring out the best way to do things. And one of the problems with this current site is if you go over to say the about page, there's enough content here that as we run all the way down, we have a footer at the very bottom of the page. This looks good. But what about on a short page like contact? I have this footer that's just kind of hanging in the middle of the page and doesn't really look good. And so there are a couple different ways that you could do this. Uh, I'm going to just show you one today because I've been using Flexbox a lot more lately. Uh, so we'll talk about how to create this same kind of layout, but with an actual footer that stays on the bottom of the page regardless of how much content is on there. So we'll do this from scratch using just HTML, CSS, and, and Flexbox. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and jump into Visual Studio Code and do this. All right, so here I am in a new project called Flexbox Footer. And as always, this code will be linked below in the description. And there's actually a GitHub repo and a CodePen if you want to just check out CodePen and fork that yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new file here. We'll call this index. Let's try that again. Call this index.html. And in here, we're going to create a HTML template so we'll say flexbox footer and what I'm gonna do is actually start with some markup I like to really start with my markup first so I know what the content is and then I'll go ahead and style that um, as I need to so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with something called a container so we'll say container and the reason for the container is I want to set a max width on this to 1024. Uh, again, this can be whatever number you feel like using. Uh, but I want to set a max width to 1024. And then everything will kind of fall in there. So if we go back to the uh, look and feel here. So no matter how wide this page is, I'm going to have this blue bar up top and this footer on the bottom. But this content in here, I want to live in a container that is 1024 pixels. So we will create that container and then we can use that margin hack of zero and auto to kind of center our design. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with the container. So inside of there, I might have a header. And inside the header, I might have some logo and navigation. And we'll just keep it at that for simplicity in this one. Um, I might have a main. And if you're new to web development, uh, what I'm doing in here inside of Visual Studio Code, when I type something out and hit tab, it's using something called Emmet. And it allows me to go ahead and quickly create my markup. So as I type H1, I can just hit tab. It puts me inside of those brackets. And then I can just say, this is my page. Um, and then when I come down here, if I want three paragraphs with some lorem ipsum in it, lorem is just some placeholder text, I can actually come in here and I want to say, I want to do that paragraph three times, and inside there I want you to add some lorem. So there we have three p tags inside of there, inside of our main element. So now I'm going to actually end that. And then I'm going to create a footer. And the reason this isn't inside of the container, if we go back to the uh, look and feel here, is 
the footer, I want to run the entire width of the page, but I want the content to be the same inside that same container constraint, right? So what we'll do is inside of the footer, I'll create a new wrapper, and inside of there, I'll say made with, and I'm gonna go ahead and add an emoji for a heart, and made with love in Cleveland, Ohio. So go ahead and save that, and that looks pretty good for my markup. So now, knowing that, I can come in here and create a new file. I'm gonna call this main.css, and I'm gonna actually put this out to the right, and now we can close this, and we can begin to style our document. So the first thing that I would do is I would come in here and say that I want a margin of zero and some padding of zero on my body. Uh, we're gonna create a border top of eight pixels, so be solid, and it's going to be this 3273DC. So this is the bright blue color, what I'm, what I'm gonna call bright blue. So I'm actually gonna use this for the footer too, so we might as well not repeat ourselves, and we can go ahead and use a CSS variable for this. So what I'll do is I'll come up here and I'll say root, and I'm gonna create something called bright blue, and that is just gonna be that value. So now what I can do is come down here and say I want you to go ahead and use that, and we can just say var, bright blue, and that will be the same. So now we got a nice border along the top, and it's a bright blue. So what else, what, what else do I wanna do here? Um, so we have our body, um, that looks good. So we have our bright blue at the top. So what I wanna do now is I wanna tell my body that um, it, I want it to, to span like a certain height. So what I can do is I can come in here and say min height is equal to 100 VH, which is the viewport height. So I think that's enough for now. We'll come back. We're gonna do something else to body, but um, what I wanna do is just come in here to container, so dot container, and we're gonna set a max width of 1024 pixels, right? Um, so we talked about that before. I'm gonna set that margin to zero on the top and bottom, and then auto on the left and right, so that'll give me that nice center. So let's go ahead and save that and run that so far and see what that looks like. All right, so we need to actually include that. Okay, so, so far so good. We have this blue on top. We have this logo and this navigation. Um, that's in the header. Let me just go ahead and change the header to include background color of F7, 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 which is a light gray. And we'll just add a little padding here. So if we come back here, that looks good. So again, we have everything in the center and then we have this footer, but nothing centered here. Um, so we could easily add that. I'm gonna go ahead and add one more thing. So we'll add a little bit of line height to this just to give it some spacing so line height there so i want to go ahead and say my footer is going to have a background color of the same bright blue so we'll say var bright blue and then what i want to do is we created this wrapper in here and the reason i did this is because it's not exactly the same as the container but it's kind of like that so what I'm gonna do is say footer uh, dot wrapper, and then inside of here, I'm gonna set a max width again of 1024 pixels. And what I'm gonna do is set margin to zero and auto, and padding of 20 pixels, and a color for the font of white. So let's go back to this, and now we're starting to look good. So we're looking good, but we're faced with the same problem. This footer is kind of right up against our content, and this is not the effect that we're trying to achieve here. So how can we go ahead and change this? Well, the first thing we can do is come up to our body and say, I want you to go ahead and, you, and 
uh, use the display of flex. So we're turning the body into a Flexbox container. Now by default, if we do that, the Flexbox direction that it wants to lay out in is a row. So we want to go ahead and change that to a column. So we'll say flex direction is column. Okay, so nothing has changed since then. But one thing that we can do now is we can come in the container and we can say that, hey, the container, I want you to go ahead and grow as much as possible. So if we go ahead and set this, so it's actually flex grow, but there's a shorthand for this by saying flex one. So just doing that, the container itself now, uh, because the container is told to grow, uh, we want it to grow as much as possible, much as uh, the available space as possible. Um, and that's because both the min height is 100 VH, so the whole page is the area of the body. The container knows that there's more room to push out. So the container, which is all of this stuff, can go ahead and say, let's push this out. Because we don't have a fixed height on this footer, if we did, you know, then, then it would, the height would, the footer would go as, as high as it needed to be. But the, the footer is just, is going as high as it needs to be to take up the content that it has. So the container, by setting flex one, or a flex grow of one, is saying, now I need to go ahead and take up all the available space that is available to me. So just with that one little trick, we fix this problem and it's a nice little fix and it just looks so much better than this. So um, I think that is uh, all we're gonna do today. So I hope you found this useful. If you'd like to see more front end tutorials from me, please leave me a comment below. Let me know if you liked this tutorial, if you did, uh, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And as always, friends, happy coding.